Well, it's certainly the case that I wouldn't be able to live where I choose to live in southern Spain were it not for all those years of profitable punting. Um, that that's certainly is the case. It is the profitable punting on a regular basis since 1998 and part-time before that that has enabled me to live in this glorious area in which I live. I miss football, I miss racing, I make no bones about it. Um, I love being having a day at the races, good quality meeting, you know, not, not for toffs. Um, you won't find me at Royal Ascot, um, but you will find me at the, you know, good quality meetings um, that I love going to. Not for the on-course catering, unlike the football where I do miss a pucker pie, um, but uh, just for the racing really. I love, I love the sport of racing, have done for many years. Um, my father, his father before him, were, were brought up surrounded by horses. My grandfather was master of the hunt in, uh, in Ireland, in Southern Ireland, as was his father before him and so on and so forth. So my father and his brothers grew up surrounded by horse flesh and I guess that's where it comes from. The punting obviously takes up most of my time. There is so much racing, so many sports you can bet on now, football, racing, Pro celebrity tiddlywinks in some part of the world you've never heard of. I don't suggest you bet on that, by the way. I'm a great believer, members, in sticking to what you know, okay? Bet on sports you know about. And that's why I look principally at horse racing and football. I'm into tennis, I am into my tennis, but I stick to what I know best. Um, I think the biggest mistake punters make is because bookies offer up so many opportunities now to bet online, You'll find yourself with an idle minute at the office or bored at home and you'll put some money on a sport you've never heard of in a country you don't know where it is and participants whose names you can't pronounce and you'll have a dabble and chances are you'll lose because you don't know anything about that sport. You haven't researched how that player, how that team has done in recent times, etc, etc. So most of my time is spent it seems like more and more every passing year um, with my head in books, studying race form, studying pedigree of the horses, um, looking back at past runs, that sort of thing, okay? Because it is, I know it is a cliche or it's fast become one, but I'm a great believer in the harder you work, the luckier you get. And whilst there's always an element of luck in any sport, where, you know, where we're dealing with thoroughbred race horses, you know, luck always comes into it, of course it does. Um, which is why I often sign off my emails by saying be lucky. But the more work you put into study and form, the more you're gonna make profit over a period of time, whether that's a month, three months, six months, a year, it's, it's a fact. So I'm trying to do that for you, okay? I know many of you are still as I was years ago, you know, working, got a day job to get up to and go to, commuting on the road, doing this, that and the other. I don't, I don't do that anymore, okay? Um, but I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for myself, because what I choose to bet on, that's my business. What you choose to bet on and with how much is your business, okay? You'll never find me telling you to get on this horse and put tenner on it or put 100 quid on it or this and that. I don't know what you money you've got spare and the old maxim about only bet with some you can afford to lose is true. It's, it's right and proper. Some people bet with thousands, some people bet with pennies. It doesn't matter as long as you make profit from the bookie. That's my way of thinking. Um, so I'm here doing the form study for you that you haven't got time to do because you've got to go to the office, you've got to do whatever, you pick up the kids from school, what have you. Okay, so treat me as your friend doing the homework doing your homework for you. I never did homework at school, but I never seem to have stopped doing homework since I became a profitable punter. Ironic that. How many times have we seen a horse the day before racing be, I don't know, something silly like eight to 13 on, and then the price drifts on the day and it wins at evens or two to one or what have you. It happens, it happens often. And as I always say, look, people say, should I worry about the price of the horse drifting on the day? 
um, sometimes it's meaningful, sometimes that drift is meaningful, sometimes it just means that another horse in the race is being backed to high heaven. But the one thing that is for sure, that is if a horse drifts in the betting market, it, the horse, he or she, does not know that. Does, do they? Eh? The horse doesn't know its price has drifted. It's gonna run the same, <laughs> it's gonna run the same as it was two hours earlier. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, the horse isn't st stood there thinking, oh my, looking at the, looking at the betting, looking at the bookies and thinking, oh my price has drifted, I'm gonna lose. No, stick with it. The one thing I really, really, really do agree with in terms of technique, if there is such a word, when it comes to profitable punting, I agree with Tom Sigal in the uh, Racing Post, price-wise, the tips are there, who says that even in a bad run, and he has them, I have them, you have them, we all have losers, we all have bad runs, um, stick to your way of operating. And I agree with price-wise on that, with Tom on that. Stick to the, the method, whatever it is, whether it's betting only each way, whether it's betting to win, whether it's only betting on the flat, whether it's only betting on the jump, whatever, whatever your particular, whatever's worked for you, know it, okay? Know what's worked for you, keep it in your head, write it down, and stick to that way of operating. Um, don't change, if you, if, you have a, if you have a bad run, as we all do, do not change your approach or your method of working because if, like for me, a certain method of working has worked, has led to a profitable annual income since 98, then it would be foolish to just change tack um, because you had a, you know, a bad week at the office, as we all can have a bad week at the office. So Tom Segal always says, don't change your method of operating, so I haven't. Um, and that's what I seek to do, stick to the same policy that's, that's done me well for many years. Do the bookies get odds wrong? You bet they get odds wrong. Of course they do. How could you not? There are so many sporting events going on all over the world, many of which the bookie knows less about than you or I know. You know, they don't know any more about some tennis match being played in some part of the world you've never heard of. And they get odds wrong of football games. So much as I remember Graham Sharp, watch that interview on here. I remember Graham Sharp saying to me, you know, so much concentration now with the bookies is on the Premier League. You know, they don't really know what's going on in League Two or whether Accrington Stanley is gonna, gonna win at home against whatever. You know, there are opportunities, everybody concentrates on the Premier League, um, but there are opportunities in football to make profit elsewhere. Look at Frank Lampard, you know, I know he's coming to an end, his, his career days are coming to an end, but Frank Lampard has made me more money um, over the years uh, betting on football than any other player or any other team. Any time goal scorer for years was overpriced. Years, season after season. Only recently, I would say only in the last season or two seasons, have the bookies, the penny has dropped with the bookies that, you know, they must offer shorter odds on Frank Lampard to score any time. He's on his 200 odd goals. You know, he's, he's going for that to, to surpass Bobby Tamlin's record at Chelsea, and he'll get there probably. And I, well, I wouldn't be able to count how many of those 200 goals of uh, Frank Lampard's I've won money on uh, because for years the book is the penny didn't drop with them and Frank Lampard was too big a price you know he was for year I, I think for an entire season or two he was 11 to 2 to score any time yes please thank you very much I'll have a bit of that it's both teams to score has become a very popular bet with punters both teams to score in a game, the odds are often short, the, off, the odds are often odds on, but it's profit. Um, PSG v Barcelona, or rather Barcelona, the return leg, um, was 5-6 to six with Boyle Sports for both teams to score. Now they're drawn 2 all um, in the first leg in PSG. So I said to members, both teams to score with Boyle Sports, 5-6. to six. That, It's an odds on price, but that was value, and that was in the favour of the punter, not the bookies. So it proved, because they drew one all. Behind me is the highest land point in Spain, and just maybe Spanish football is going to peak at Wembley in May. Now we know the semi-final draw for the Champions League and Barcelona and Real Madrid. 
have avoided each other, just maybe we'll have an El Clasico at Wembley in May. Wouldn't that be a match to savour? Um, I think, as uh, members know, I was on Bayern Munich very early in this Champions League. I can't remember it was. I'll have to look it up. I think it was 7-1, to one, maybe bigger, um, to win the Champions League. And then, when the book is foolishly, in my opinion, had ba uh, Barcelona 5-1 to one to win the Champions League after they had lost their first leg against AC Milan, I lumped on Barca as well then. So I am on Bayern Munich and Barcelona to win the Champions League. I wish they'd avoided each other in the semi-final because then if they'd played each other in the final at Wembley, I could have sat back, got the cigar out and um, not worried about who won really because I would have won either way. I would expect now Real Madrid to be in the final at Wembley um, and it's, if you believe in fate and uh, you're starting to think, I'm starting to think that I'm going to lose both my bets on Barca and uh, Bayern and that uh, destiny is calling Real Madrid to win the Champions League, which is, let's face it, all the fans have been waving their white handkerchiefs for for many years now is to win the big one. Maybe Ronaldo, maybe Mourinho can bring them the Champions League. Time will tell. I'm hoping that Bayern or Barca win because then my bets made at judicious times during the course of the season um, will will pay off. But um, if it is um, a Barca via Real Madrid final, then I, yes, the atmosphere at Wembley will be good. But around this neck of the woods where I live, believe me, in Spain, um, it will be electric.